Welcome to the season of self-love, your daily dose of inspiration and encouragement. I'm your host, Naomi Banks, and I am thrilled to be here with you today. This podcast is brought to you by Ask Naomi and Elevate Me Self-Discovery. Are you ready to elevate your mindset and embrace the power of self-love? Or have you come to the right place? Each day, we'll dive into topics that will empower and inspire you on your journey towards self-discovery and personal growth. Whether you're looking to cultivate healthy relationships, boost your confidence, or find balance in your life, this podcast is here to support your every step of the way. We believe that self-love is the foundation of living a fulfilled and joyful life. And together we explore practical tips, insightful interviews, and transformative stories that will leave you feeling inspired and motivated. So join me Monday through Friday as we embark on this daily adventure of self-love. Tune in to the Season of Self Love podcast to start your day on a positive note and discover the limitless potential within yourself. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, November 21st, 2023, and I am your host, Naomi Banks, and welcome to another episode of the Season of Self Love. Well, today we're going to have a little fun, and it's so fitting that we're talking about this topic because of. Thanksgiving on Thursday. I know yesterday we talked about gratitude, but today we're talking about mindful eating, cultivating a positive relationship with food in your body. Yes, that is what we're talking about today. We will be exploring the concept of mindful eating and its impact on our overall well-being. Join me today as we dive into the importance of developing a positive relationship with food and our bodies and learn practical tips for incorporating the mindlessness into our eating habit. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and we're going to start off with what is this mindful eating, Naomi? What you talking about mindful eating? We're going to talk about it. It's your girl, goddess, Naomi Banks, here on The Season of Self-Love, and we'll be right back. Hey, it's your girl, goddess, Naomi Banks, and make sure you tune in every Thursday night to Ask Naomi and Bridging the Gap podcast, where we talk about everything from love, sex, relationship, cultural differences, and so much more. We're bridging the gap between them all, and we even talk about spiritual uplifting. You need to stop by me and Darkon Mike Mike, as well as the BTG crew. We have some amazing guests that come through. You never know. Just make sure you tune in Thursday night, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Go to AskNaomi.com and tell them Naomi sent you. Have you ever felt like you're standing at the door to success? Key in the hand, but something's holding you back? Well, you're not alone. My new ebook, Unlocking Your Door to Success, is your guide to healing and overcoming those internal struggles. If you want to learn more and step into your success, go to stand.store slash elevate me self discovery. Get your free ebook for a limited time. Well, welcome back. It's your girl, the goddess, Nami Banks, here on the season of self love. And today's topic, we are talking about mindful eating, cultivating a positive relationship with food in your body. And as I said before the break and opening is that this week is Thanksgiving. And you know how we all sit around that table with all of that good food, whether it's turkey, ham, dressing, stuffing, or whatever you call it, sweet potatoes, Mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, greens. I'm making it, making your stomach feel good right now, huh? But you know, always we always feel guilty once we eat all of that. We always want to, you know, go on this ultimate diet, you know, cleanse our bodies and do all all of these things that create an unhealthy relationship with food and with our body, really. It, I am one to stand up with my hands raised high, swinging them side to side. Because when I hit in my 40s, let me tell you, 
it was like a love and hate relationship that I had with food. And mind you, in all of my 40 years, I've never had to worry about my weight or what it looked like if I had to lose weight. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. But for me, now, being 51 years old, you know, it's I have to watch some of the foods that I eat. I have to watch some of the things that I put in, inside of my body. But also, I have to be mindful of the things that I do while eating those things as well. And that is what we're going to talk about today. So mindful eating is about engaging in all of our senses to enjoy and savor our food. It starts the contrast of traditional eating habits where we often consume meals while distracted. You know, whether we're watching TV or we're driving or typing away on our keyboards. Mindful eating is about pausing in the midst of your busy day in your lives to truly experience the food that we eat. So the benefits of this, right? You want to know what the benefits of this? There's a rich in flavor as we begin to notice when we eat mindfully. Digestion begins in the mouth. So by slowing it down, we actually are improving our body ability to process the food. This also is a deep satisfaction that comes from really tasting our meals and we become attuned to our bodies, hunger, and fullness signals, which can help prevent overeating. All right, so it's all about understanding the relationship with food and body image. Our relationship with food in our bodies is often complicated by the media's portrayal of the ideal body, societal expectations, and cultural norms. These influences can distort our eating habits and the way we see ourselves. I felt the sting of these pressures and the way that they can make every meal a battleground and every reflection in the mirror a critique. You know, for me, being in front of the camera, majority all of my adult life, all of my life, period, um, <clears throat> that imaging for me was everything. And even though in the beginning I didn't have problems with my weight, I was a, a little bitty skinny thing. You know, um, my biggest thing then was like, how can I put on a, a little weight, you know? Um, <clears throat> but now, as I mentioned before, as I'm getting older, that weight that I was looking for before is now here. But then I'm not appreciating what well, I haven't. I now I, I appreciate it more now. But before I wasn't appreciating the weight that I was having on me and understanding on why this weight is on me. It's about self-acceptance and embracing your body diversity because it's very crucial. It's about recognizing that bodies come in all shapes and sizes and that that's not just okay, it's beautiful. It's about changing the narrative from one of a criticism to one of appreciation. So as I mentioned, as I got older, and I'm gonna be honest, in the past few years, I come to appreciate these beautiful curves. I came to appreciate my childbearing hips. I come to appreciate every single role on my body because I am blessed that I am able to still be alive at 51 years old and semi-healthy. So now I'm working on having a better relationship with food, having a better relationship with combining both my food and my body. So me understanding and being mindfully of what I'm eating or how I'm eating, uh, understanding it is what I'm sharing with you all today. So it's like, what are the fundamentals of mindful eating? The core principles of mindful eating involve engaging fully with the act of eating, slowing down and savoring each and every bite. Listening to our body cues are all a part of this practice. It's about noticing the crunch of a carrot, the sweetness of a strawberry, and the spice of a pepper on the tongue. Incorporating mindfulness into mealtime can start with how we shop for food, choosing items thoughtfully 
and extend to preparation where we can enjoy the colors and the aroma of our ingredients and we can eat. It's about being present with each and every bite. Now for me, I am so guilty. So let me tell you this. When I go on these, these little eating diets, or even when I just when I when I feel like I want to cook one of my favorite meals, or when you know I have um, I have a different palate. My palate has different tastes. Sometimes I I'm in a bougie mood when I want you know some salmon you know with sushi and you know all then sometimes I want to go straight to my southern foods, you know um, soul foods. And I always make um, make my plate like look so beautiful. I do. I make it look so beautiful. But even in the process of me cooking these meals, I can imagine how they taste. <laughs> like I can imagine how they taste. And I believe when you cook like that, when you 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 putting that um, that soul in it, you putting that love in it. What is that saying that? Um, the love in the kitchen, something like that. Y'all know what I mean. But when you in that kitchen and you put that love into your food, oh, man, and just imagine sitting down and eating. And I'm thinking about Thanksgiving. I'm thinking about, I'm, as they say, I'm getting ready to put my foot in this seafood, this shrimp dressing this week. This week. Oh, my God. Yes, I am. And when I made it the first time last year, it was amazing. And we had guests that came over and they loved it. So this time I'm actually going to my sister's. We're going to my sister's for Thanksgiving. And she also does not eat turkey, but the rest of her family does. So she was like, yes, please bring that, please bring that dressing on with you. And so I can just imagine us sitting at the table and just the... Ugh, as I'm sitting here talking right now, I'm I'm just it's just savoring in my mouth. And I haven't even unthawed the shrimp yet <laughs> to even create it. But just knowing and understanding what that is, what mindful eating is, it just it makes you feel good. It's that good feeling. It is that good feeling when you think about eating that turkey. For y'all to eat that turkey. Or when you think about eating that ham. And you sitting there with your back to, you know, sitting back and, you know, you just chewing and just, you know, it's just feeling and you just imagining just that, just every taste that's in there. From the pineapple juice. That you taste a bit of the mustard, a bit of the brown sugar. You can taste that little tanginess of that funny flavor from the cloves. Y'all see where I'm going with this? So it gives you a, a, a beautiful satisfaction. So where you don't feel guilty about eating these foods because it's making you feel good. And you're, you're thinking, you're slowing down. You're slowing down yourself. You're slowing down your mental. Because now you're focusing on the present. Next, let's talk about developing healthy attitudes towards food. Now, food is not just um, fuel. It's also one of life's pleasures. It's meant to be enjoyed and not categorized into a good or bad boxes. Now, I've learned that this binary thinking only leads to guilt and a disordered relationship with eating. It becomes toxic. We need to dismantle diet cultural myth and dictate our food choices instead listen to our own bodies. It's about balance, a variety in allowing ourselves to enjoy food without guilt. So this Thursday at Thanksgiving dinner and those leftovers, <laughs> enjoy that food, enjoy it. Be mindful of a sit down when you sit down with your family members and you're eating. Think about how you prepare that food, or think about even loving the person who made the food and the thought behind it. You know, when you're sitting down the next day and you're eating those leftovers, try it, sit down with it. 
and enjoy it. It's time for us to start cultivating our body awareness and self-compassion. It's about developing awareness. It's about tuning into the signals our body sends us from hunger, fullness, fatigue, and the need for movement. It's about responding to the signals with kindness rather than judgment. Practicing self-compassion means speaking to ourselves with the same kindness we will offer to a good friend. It's about celebrating our bodies for what they can do and not just how they look. Positive affirmation and finding joy and movement can reinforce this compassionate approach. Overcoming challenges and building sustainable habits. Adopting mindful eating habits isn't without challenges. But all habits die hard and there will be setbacks. But it's in this moment that self-compassion is most crucial. It's about recognizing that one meal won't define us and that each meal is a new opportunity to practice mindfulness. Building sustainable habits mean looking at a long-term relationship we want to have with food and our bodies. And it's about creating a positive, nourishing cycle that supports our overall well-being. So when you choose to eat food that you feel that are as, that are not good for your body, understand it and listen and say, okay, so why am I eating this? Am I eating this because it tastes good? But it tastes good, but is it good for my body? And we know our body. We know our body. You know, it's funny. Just the other day, um, Sunday, it was Sunday, I was sitting at my altar doing prayer and meditation, and I remember sitting there, and I was thinking, man, if I was to leave this earth today, who would take care of my baby girl? And I, I truly thought about that. I thought if me and my baby was gone, me and my baby boo was gone, who would take care of our youngest child? The way that she needs to be taken care of, meaning that will respect and understand her person of who she is and not try to change it. You understand? And when I looked around, I said, oh, my God, there is no one. So for me, I have to be mindful on how I do things for my body. That I have to make sure that I am taking the vitamins that I'm making sure that I'm paying attention to the things that are harmful for me. And that's even stress. That's even people energies. And I remember waking up that morning. Man, I woke up, I think, was at 1.30? 1.30 in the morning. And I instantly picked up my, my cell phone and I was going through TikTok. Actually, it was like one of the either first or second videos that popped up about parasites. And before I knew it, I was going down this hole, (laughs) that rabbit hole, and was looking through all of these things about parasites and how it causes this and that, that, this, this. And I was like, wow. But then I thought, have you ever cleansed your body like that? No, I haven't. And I was like, okay, this is the time that you need to start getting rid of those things in your body those parasites and those toxins because that can be the very cause of you having these migraines. You've been to the doctor, you've had a CAT scan, you have all of these things and they still cannot tell you why you have these migraines, but they steady giving me medication. So it's like, okay, now I need to pay attention to what I eat. Now I need to be mindful of the things that I put in different recipes. So even though I say enjoy that dinner on Thanksgiving Day, do that. But also be mindful of what you're putting in your body. And I'm not saying feel guilty about it. I'm, it's, this is the time that you learn to understand what is it that your body needs and wants from you. To have a lasting life on this earth in this body. So me, am I going to eat some greens? Yes, I'm going to eat some greens. Am 
I going to eat some turkey? No, there will be no dirty birds for me. And why? It's because I'm very in tune with what my body likes and don't like. Like I've cut down with meat. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. I eat different type of fish. Lentils. I love that. Oh my God. And so I'm creating healthy boundaries with myself, with food, but also even when when creating these dishes, I think about how it's going to make me feel. I think about my goal is to be on this earth way past I'm 100 years old. Yes, I said that. And so for me to do that, then I have to think mindfully of what I put into my body. But also, if I was, as they say, backslap, <laughs> and I was to get me a drink of wine or, you know, I don't drink hard liquor anymore. So wine is my, my drink to, that, I, that I do now. But I won't feel guilty about it. I will enjoy in that moment and say, you know what, you deserve this drink of wine. Or you deserve this piece of cake. So instead of like, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe I did that. No, well, you deserve that. You worked hard all week long. These are the mindful things that you start to tell yourself. These are the things that you have the self-compassion on. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? And I know you're like, well, Naomi, why are we talking about being mindful of food and eating and stuff like that? Because to be very honest... How we see ourselves in our imagery is a part of our self-love and our self-care for ourselves. Because when we look at that reflection of the, in the mirror, we have to love who that, who that image is looking right back at us. And sometimes we blame the food that we eat on why we see that vision in that mirror. So if you start to make healthier choices, and what I mean, I'm not talking about healthy like in food. I'm talking about healthier in the way that you think about these foods, the way that you prepare these foods. Slow down with them. Slow down with your thought. Let's not hurry. Let's be in that moment. So when you're cooking your breakfast this morning, do it with enthusiasm. Do it with love. Do it with appreciation of life. When you're sitting down and you're drinking that cup of coffee and you're eating that bagel or whatever, sit in that moment when you're eating and you taste that cream cheese and, oh, this tastes so good. And think about what else makes you feel good. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? So when I say this is the season of self-love, we will be talking about everything because we try, it ain't, I'm, I'm, let me take that try out, let me take it, because we are creating an intimate relationship with ourselves and that's with everything that we put in it from food to water to another person's body, <laughs> y'all know what I mean. So this is why this podcast is very important to me and why it's very important for me to do it on a daily because these are reminders for myself as well to, oop, you didn't do that today. Oh, okay. But like I said, this is so fitting for this to happen this week. Because this is a time that we, you know, we get ready to list, list. After this, we're going on a diet. After this, we're changing our eating habits. After this, we're doing this. You know, but if you choose to do this, do it in a way that you're not feeling guilty. 
do it in a way that is a positive for you to make that decision and that choice. That's the last thing that you want to put that negative toxic into your body. And that's with that thought. That's with that guilt. Y'all understand what I'm saying? All right, tonight's today's show, excuse me, <clears throat> is going to be very short. Um, and I want to just wrap it up real fast. So, look, right now I invite you to take a moment to consider your own journey with food in with your body. And mindful eating is just, isn't just just a practice. It's a pathway to a more harmonious and beautiful life. It's an opportunity to turn every meal into a moment of gratitude, self-care, and presence. Remember, your body is your lifelong companion and how you nourish it as a reflection of your relationship with yourself. Let's choose mindfulness. Let's choose joy. Let's choose health in every bite that we take. So when you're sitting down at that dinner table on this Thursday for Thanksgiving, sit with your eyes closed and just, mmm. Just think about every bite that you take. And thank God that you are surrounded by the beautiful people in your family that surround you at that table. Think about every bite. Think about the blessing that you've had the money to be able to purchase the ingredients to create that dish. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So I enjoyed this talk again. Thank you for sharing this space with me. And um, I guess have a good one. I will see you and speak to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to the Season of Self Love podcast. If you have any questions or would like to connect with us, you can follow us on social media. Just search for the Season of Self Love on Instagram. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, feel free to email us at elevateme9999 at gmail.com. And remember, you are worthy of love, growth, and happiness. So keep shining bright and I'll see you tomorrow for another episode of the season of self-love. Be good to one another in yourselves and always keep it sexy. Send the light, love, and prayers.